Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Yamamoto Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our old friend, Sergio Oliva Jr. Welcome back. What's up, guys? I'm back. You, we only have you on when you got something to say, so I know you got something big to say. You made an announcement this past week that you're not doing, you were definitely not doing the Olympia. Um, we kind of, you kind of hinted at that earlier in the year when we talked after New York Pro. What was the uh, final deciding factor? Um, I mean, really, it comes down to if, if, if realistically, if I had a different name and maybe if I was kind of going about this sport a little bit different, then yeah, so what? You know, I'd go in not really, really preparing right and have fun, like how people say all the time. But this shit's not, I mean, it's fun, but prepping for a show is not fun for me. So doing the Olympia just to say I did it. It's only going to it's only going to bother me more that I went in with my name and, and as much as I care about the sport to kind of half ass it because my life's not together. I need I needed to get my life back still. I needed to get, you know, sponsors and my and just my personal life together before I could even think about getting ready for the Super Bowl. So I just felt like if I was going to go at that prep, it was definitely going to be a half ass attempt. And I feel like after New York, uh, that would that would only hurt me. So and getting the um, invite from Arnold, I felt like was a sign that it was a perfect time to, you know, take a break. And you know what, Dave, I feel like a lot of these guys don't take breaks, you know, like they don't take mental breaks and physical breaks off their body. And I needed to heal after that prep and I need to mentally get myself ready for another prep and clean my body out, have a good off season, maybe put some more weight on and then maybe go into the Arnold and maybe surprise a couple of people rather than go into the Olympia. And I know I wouldn't even be in the first two call outs. Yeah. Well, you, you were also needed emotional healing as well because you had a, a rough run uh, for the New York pro. And uh, obviously I think that that was a, a good decision on your part, especially given the fact that you can always get on stage and do the, um, and do the uh, Arnold classic come uh, March and, uh, and then have a good run in 2018. Um, you're also a guy that's not really afraid to say what's on your mind. You know what I mean? If you don't feel it in your heart, you don't do it. Isn't that pretty much your mantra? Yeah, exactly. And I know I'm making a lot of people upset by not doing it. And all I can say is that I promise I'll never pass it up again. That's, that's all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've, uh, since the New York Pro, and you've been watching, obviously, these pro shows that have been popping up and seeing the guys who are winning, um, I, I, I know a lot of people say, Sergio should have done that show, and he should have done this show. And I, my response to everyone who says that to me is, he already won New York Pro. What has he got to prove at this point? Yeah, it really would have just been to kind of knock out other people and maybe for financial reasons. But no, and you know what? You know what's the craziest part is that because I was so financially strapped going into New York, I took every guest posing I could possibly find. <laughs> so, and it, and it worked out where every guest posing I had was during a show. Like even the cow, which was the next weekend right after New York, right. I had a guest posing. And I just don't want to be that guy who you see pros that they sign up for stuff and then they don't show up. And yeah, I mean, I, I literally passed up, what was the price for Cal? Like 15 grand? I think I passed up 15 yeah. grand for $2,500 guest posing. So, but I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. And uh, I, I do feel that the, the rest of the shows were, were really weak. Yeah. So, all right, well, look, you know, you made a decision and you stuck by it. And I'm sure the promoter, I always said to people, when I was in my prime, you know, uh, especially the 2002 to 2003 year, those are my, probably my best, I did uh, 25 guest posings a year. I'm not kidding. At, you know, at about $1,500 to $2,000 a week, and that's, that was a lot of money. But I, I nurtured so many relationships with these promoters that I still am friends with them, and we still do stuff business-wise with each other to this day. So sometimes taking a little less money, you know, and making the, the connections and showing people that you're a personable guy and that the fans like you and that you like have a lot to give to the sport is way more valuable than taking the quick money on the win. Yeah, for sure. I was really glad to have traveled too. I mean, I, I really don't mind that. Uh, maybe I haven't been a pro long enough, but I still really enjoy traveling except for the crying babies on my planes that I keep getting. But besides that, I, uh, it was good to interact with the fans exactly on a, on a more non-dieting level because you know when you're dieting, you're not all there. So even when you're having conversations with people, it's really not really sincere conversations. So it, it, it was good. I'm, I'm really glad and I, I definitely do not regret anything. I just am really excited to start this off season because I really wanna come in and do the same thing that I did in New York and really shock a bunch of people. 
Well, I think you will. Now, um, you're also a, a social media guy, and you're uh, very outspoken about certain things. And I noticed that on, uh, I don't know if it was on your Instagram or someone else's Instagram, I saw you being very critical of the, uh, of the anabolic chicken going on out there at Oxygen Gym. You, I think you, 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 your quote was, it's really an anabolic mirror. Is that true? <laughs> you're trying to get me stabbed, Dave. Uh, no, I, I, I just I just think that, you know, except for Ashkenani, who, who won against, you know, David Henry, which is kind of like the battle of the upper bodies, and and Brandon Curry, who really just stood next to Dallas, there wasn't anyone who's really came out of there that's been like, oh, my God, you know, they looked exactly the way they did in front of the mirror that they did on stage. It, I feel like almost taking those pictures in front of those mirrors almost hurt them because it builds so much hype. And whatever, whatever's going on in that mirror, it makes them look so ridiculous, makes them look like they're 3% body fat. And then even if you did show up in your best shape, just because you posted those pictures in front of that mirror, it almost kind of kills the, the, the momentum and the, and the hype. Yeah, exactly, especially the mystique. So I just feel like for everyone to be like doing the same thing they did once again after every Olympia where they post that same picture and everyone wants to start calling off how Rami's going to beat Dexter and he's going to beat Sean, he's going to beat Phil. It's just like, man, how about we just – let it let's just see what happens for the first time right well hype is always good for the show but let me ask this question there's been a, a photo floating around i'm sure you've seen it uh it's a du back double bicep uh, of big rami from last year at six weeks out and then again this year at six weeks out i did a little rant on it earlier today um have you seen the picture yeah i have what what's your take on that what, what what's your is rami behind in your mind or is it just another one of these these uh hallucinogenic pictures that they're putting up there it, I mean, it, I feel like it looks like it's altered a little bit. It, it, it looks like it's really grainy. But um, I feel like he's he's definitely a little bit ahead of what he was last year. Um, it's just, man, you know, you know what a show is. It doesn't matter what you look like five, six weeks out. I know that Chris is the specialist of dialing you in that day of. So I don't even care if he posted a picture well, a week out. It's really that last couple of days that you really need someone really fine-tuning you. And now that he's dropped Chris... I'm more curious than anyone to see what he's going to bring. Right. Well, well, if you look at the picture, the picture on the left is the one uh, from last year where he's way more conditioned. And then the one on the right is the one from this year where he looks big, but he's, he's not showing the definition he showed at six weeks out. My question is, is knowing Rami's physique and his metabolism, is that dangerous that he's not really looking as hard as he was last year at six weeks to go? Yeah, I just don't feel like he's ever lost a show from not being big enough. So that should be the least thing to worry about. He's he's not conditioned Rami, he's big Rami. So right. I feel like going into the show that if it was me and I mean I'm not I'm not the camel crew, I don't know as much as they do, but I definitely would be focusing on condition because I feel like he outweighs everybody by right. goddamn hundred pounds already. <laughs> All right, let me ask you another question since we're talking about other uh, competitors. Derek Lunsford, who I just interviewed, um, uh, who won the USA this year, jumped in the Tampa Pro 212, won that, qualified for his Olympia. He's going to the Olympia in six weeks. Um, here's a guy who two years ago was a middleweight at 155 pounds, <laughs> and he competed at 205 pounds on stage uh, a year later uh, or two years later. Um, what do you think about that guy's uh, jump up yeah, in, I mean, in the world. Derek's representing the Midwest from where I came from. And, and I, I keep preaching about how the bodybuilding's dying in the Midwest. But I mean, Derek, Derek kind of proved me wrong because, man, he came in and not only, not only did he do work, but he made a lot of other pros feel really salty. I've already talked to a lot of pros that already feel shitty that they've taken off time while this guy's done multiple shows. And, you know, now everyone's talking about him. And it's crazy because me, when I first won my pro card, I was like, there's no way I got to take time off. You know, I'm so scared of these guys. For him to just knock them out, you know, one after another, I still feel like he's going to knock out a couple pros at the Olympia, too. Uh, I mean, I, I, my hat's off to him. I, I And the word, the best part, thing about him, he's such a good guy. You know, there's a lot of fucking dicks in this sport. And you can look great on stage, but off stage, they just don't really uh, uh, compliment the same uh, shock value that they give on stage. So, and he's definitely one of them. He's really... He's really down to earth, and he's a really nice guy. And, this, and the sport of bodybuilding needs more of Derek's. That's for sure. Who, who's a guy in this sport who's not a nice guy in your in your mind? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're really trying to get. Um, see, I feel like in bodybuilding it's tough because sometimes you'll have someone that you'll have like a Justin Compton or or people like that who get a bad rep, 
but you don't know really what's happened in their personal life. And, and I'm starting to learn that too. And just a couple times, I've gotten screwed by promoters for guest posings. And now when I get ready for a guest posing, I have to go about it a certain professional way on a business level. And if you don't know that I already got screwed several times, I might come off like, oh, that he's only, he's only about business. He's not really trying to help anyone out. So I feel like there's people that get bad reps, um, but a lot of them are, are, are misunderstood as well. Uh, I have people that I, I don't like for multiple reasons, just because some I want to beat them, some I don't like how they've talked to me, but that's that's just how it goes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I know you had been on the last time we interviewed you, you were t talking about Juan Morel and how you know he said you were never going to beat him again, and chances are you're probably going to wind up on stage against him at the uh, Arnold Classic uh, I hope so. in, in the beginning of 2018, so that should be a real good, uh, I guess you could say, a grudge rematch, huh? Yeah, but Juan's a Juan, Juan, exactly. I'm gonna, I want to talk shit to Juan on stage, but <laughs> on a personal level, it's, it's completely different. Juan's, Juan's one of the good ones. He's a, he's a good guy. Of course. Uh, I would more want to uh, prove more of these Camel Crew people aren't exactly what they are. I mean, besides Nathan, I, I, I don't feel like really anyone's untouchable. Nathan, I feel like could be a possible next Mr. Olympia uh, in the future. But like Akeem, I don't feel like Akeem will ever beat me. I want to beat him every time. I, I feel like certain people are really kind of cold and a little bit full of themselves, and they need a rude awakening. Well, Akeem will be on that stage, I'm sure, at the Arnold Classic too. From what I spoke to him earlier in the uh, in the week, and uh, like I said, Akeem, you, Juan, you know, Della Rosa. Even though you know you might have disputes on stage, all good guys, you know. And I have to say that. You know, I've been exposed to a lot of people, and there are some guys that are, are not good guys, but these, these are good guys, and I like to, to drum up the rivalry between you guys because you're all in that same age category, in that same generation you came up together. Maybe some of you took a little longer to turn pro, but ultimately, you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna be battling it out for the next five to you know, 10 years. God willing, your health, everyone stays good. And to me, that's exciting. I want to see rivalries. I don't want everyone kissing each other and, and, and saying how much they love each other. I like the fact that you, you guys have <laughs> rivalries on stage and that you, you, you know, it turns to war when you're backstage, you know? Absolutely. I, ca I called Juan after New York. We talked on the phone, and that's exactly what I said. Is I, I feel like bodybuilding is boring now. And, and I, I feel like there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a difference between attacking someone personally and talking shit on a, like, on a competitive level. And, man, I want to start up another... Ronnie and Jay, you know, another dad, my dad and Arnold. And I'm not saying I have to be one of those two, right. but even just as a, as a fan, I would love to watch that. I mean, the, sure. the last sure. Arnold for last year was great, but that whole kumbaya on stage together where they all know hands <laughs> was just, it's not going to make me really want to watch the next Arnold. I can tell you that. Cedric wins his trophy and then wants to give it to Max Charles. What is that shit? It makes no sense at all. But I, don't, I look at it a little bit different. I, I do. I want to I wanna talk shit. And, and exactly, I, when I get beat, because I'm going to get beat at some point right. uh that's only gonna make me a better person so i love it but some bodybuilders don't like that some are so used to getting stroked off their whole life that they're not used to someone you know beating them and kind of you know talking shit in their face let me ask you this question um obviously uh, cedric mcmillan is the defending arnold classic champion um i i would suspect we'd see him back again uh can you beat him um poof. It's, it's crazy because Cedric Cedric's bigger than me. He's, he's a way better bodybuilder than me. But I feel like condition-wise, uh, I feel like I can beat him on that. It's just depending on what they're looking for. But with Dennis coming back, Cedric coming back, and if Nathan enters the show in Dallas, I have no problem being in that first call-out with them. And if I lost to those guys, as long as I beat Dallas, I, I could completely walk away more than happy because losing to Dennis and Cedric – and maybe like a, a future Mr. Olympia like Nathan, that just means that I, I'm still making progress. And that's all I care about. I'm not trying to win the Olympia tomorrow. I just want to win it at some point. Like to, let's face it, you love to win. You don't like to lose. I mean, I'm on a winning streak with Chris. Why would I want to lose? I'm not used to losing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We're, we're two for two. So. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to the Olympia? Yeah, of course. I'm going to go. I'll be working at the Sinister booth right. and I'll be at the Protan booth. Now you have it. You have a new sponsor. You want to talk about that? Yes. Yes. Finally. I. Uh, yeah. But I, it's it's really cool because I've been talking to them actually since before New York. They're out of here in Venice, uh, a smaller company, Old School Labs. But I, I I like them a lot because they're not about putting so much money into advertisement. 
and uh, having a bunch of athletes. So I, I really wanted to be part of a company that I can bring up, but also puts more into the supplements and the athletes rather than just throwing money out and making it look like they're a shreds company and not really having any kind of good product. Looks like Mike Mentor on there. Is the Mentor family <laughs> is the Mentor family going to be suing this company because of that picture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I, I made that post the other day and a whole bunch of people tagged the Mentors in my post. It, it looks like them. Yeah. How's the Victory clothing line doing? I'm looking for my next shirt in the mail. When are you, when are you bringing it? When are you sending it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll be sending it out. I, I made one. I finally put my dad on a shirt. I, I didn't feel like I, I should have been able to put my dad's image on a shirt until I, I earned my own, you know, stripes on stage. And after New York, I felt like now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, I, better about doing stuff like that. Because I'm, I'm really weird about using my dad's image and stuff like that. Anyone who knows me knows that's how I am. So I finally made a shirt with him on it. Um, and I think that's really cool. I think if, if he was around and saw that, I think it, no matter how stubborn he is, I think he, <laughs> I, I love your clothing. I think it's fantastic. I love the way it fits. It's soft fit. It's a higher quality clothing line. If people want to get a hold of it, remind us the best way to do that. It's just victoryclothing.com. Okay. Sergio, Easy thanks. I uh, appreciate the update and uh, we'll see you at the Olympia. We'll certainly come by the booth and uh, interview you and, uh, and see how you, uh, Saw the prejudging going because I love your opinions and uh, keep up the great work on social media. I think you're a, a breath of fresh air in our sport. Absolutely. You guys too. Thanks for being uh, the, the new no bull radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sergio Oliva Jr. Uh, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With. Uh, I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.